The biggest change the Star Citizen flight is yet to happen. And no, it is not Master Modes. So what is it then? What change lures on the horizon and will change the flight mechanics we've known for a long time? Think for a second about what makes this Star Citizen flight experience so special. It's the fact that, depending on where we go and where we fly, we are confronted with a unique set of factors that influence how a ship behaves and how you adapt as a pilot. I am of course talking about atmospheric density and gravity. How you introduce the aerodynamic shapes of your ship to the elements at speed. Which maneuvering thrusters you use and which rotational forces you apply to your ship. As you experience aerodynamic loading, your ship is in essence a control service. A control service that, for now, is adjusted only by maneuvering thrust power. Where real-life airplanes typically use only control services to adjust the attitude of a ship, Star Citizen, for now again, realizes 100% on the maneuvering thrusters to do the work. And while there is lift, I would argue there is not enough, since we always require a good amount of strafe up power just to stay in level flight, even on an Earth like like Microtech. This is all set to change though, as CIG has for the first time given us a glimpse of what control services will do in the future. They are working on the tech right now for Squadron 42. It appears that the goal is to shift what primarily drives the attitude of the ship during atmospheric flight from the maneuvering thrusters to the control services, where the maneuvering thrusters will turn on or off depending on situational demand. Meaning how fast you're going and how much air flows past the ship, since control services don't work without airflow. It appears that the goal is to shift what primarily drives the attitude of the ship during atmospheric flight from the maneuvering thrusters to the control services, where the maneuvering thrusters will turn on or off depending on situational demand. Meaning how fast you're going and how much air flows past the ship, since of course control services don't work without airflow. And this is really exciting, but also raises some serious questions. Questions we'll explore in this video. First, let's take a good look at the ships we fly in Star Citizen. They come in so many different shapes and sizes. Some look like they are perfect for aerodynamic flight and some others, well, they don't. Some ships have control services, others VTOL some both, and some none at all. A surprisingly large number of ships come with control services, more than I realized at first. Here's a few. Here's a few ships with rotating VTOL thrusters, typically the main engines. I could find two ships that do both. I was surprised though to find so many ships lacking both, no control services, no VTOL, just maneuvering thrusters. 
And this is really interesting with the changes that are coming. Let's explore what's changing and guesstimate what this will mean for our favorite ships. An important change will have to be made to maneuvering thrusters. They have to be made weaker in order to make way for the control services to be the primary driver for ship attitude adjustments. Right now, maneuvering thrusters are very strong, vertical thrust especially. Ships will hover in any orientation and can fly around slowly and hover about all day long. I absolutely hate the sight of this and would love to see change here that makes the game harder, but more fun and more balanced at the same time. The introduction of control services alone can drive a huge shift here in how ships work, how immersive the movement looks and how they balance in combat too. If maneuvering thrusters are made weaker, so as to not drive the ship attitude changes, then they might struggle to hover so easily. Maybe ships won't be able to hover around for a long time at all, unless they have the necessary VTOL capabilities. Let's take this Buccaneer with control services. Right now it can hover indefinitely and provide sustained firepower to the ground for as long as it likes. Yes, it's a spaceship and maybe it should, I am fully aware that there are people that have that standpoint. But if control services are planned to work the way CIG states, ships will likely struggle to hover in place for a long time and require speed to work attitude changes. This would mean that a strafing run becomes the new go-to and a typical combat ship only has a small amount of time on target. Imagine the balancing opportunities there. Compare it to a ship with VTOL capabilities for example, which, because of its rotating main engines, should likely be able to stay on site in a hover for a much longer time, providing that sustained firepower on ground locations. It'll change things for takeoffs and landings too. This is what I'm really excited about. We'll surely still see vertical takeoffs and landings for all ships as I can't imagine CIG going to the lengths of requiring rolling starts or landings. The outposts aren't set up for it and quite honestly, I can't imagine we want that from Star Citizen anyway. We are flying spaceships after all. But imagine if hovering can only occur for a small amount of time. Either because the maneuvering thrusters are too weak or because they overheat when firing for prolonged periods of time. With that in mind, we would have to approach a landing with speed, so as to give the maneuvering thrusters a break while the control services do all the work. Then when we slow down to a hover, we start leaning on the maneuvering thrusters when the control services become ineffective due to that lack of airflow, and gently touch down like we're used to, albeit with a bit more haste and effort required to get down safe and quickly. Again, unless you're a ship with VTOL, in which case you thrive at slower speeds as the main engines do all that heavy lifting. It will be really interesting too to learn how different ships behave. The Corsair for example having access to control services and VTOL might be a ship that can fit a certain role that other ships can't. An interesting point and some food for thought. What strikes me as interesting is that they mention that maneuvering thrusters are turned off entirely at speed, and this is why a ship might approach a stall before they are turned on again. This really surprises me because I didn't imagine that it would be such a binary toggle. As usual, I want complete manual control first of all, and I expected that the maneuvering thrusters and control services would just work all the time, at the same time. The only thing that would change naturally and on a gradient is their effectiveness. This is what I mean, at low densities and a lack of airflow, maneuvering thrusters are more effective and control services are less effective. Then at high densities and a lot of airflow, 
The maneuvering thrusters aren't strong enough to do much of the work, and it is instead the control services that are much more effective. They both work at the same time, and only one of them is effective at the same time. Again, it surprises me that there is the need for an arbitrary binary toggle. That's the way they describe it. And I hope it won't feel too arcadey or fake. I hope they can work together and it won't feel like this big switch that happens. So we know how ships with control services and or VTOL thrusters might work, but what about ships with neither? Are they going to be terrible in atmospheric flight? A part of me embraces that idea. Some ships should be better in zero pressure, zero G environments and struggle to fight high speed, high density airflow pressures. It will be really fun when ships like that can do okay flying in a straight line in atmosphere because they do have lift uh, from either their wings or their body, but they won't be able to turn fast and need to slow down to do a 180 degree turn on a dime. It'll feel like you're really landing a heavy spacecraft on a planet and you must adjust your approach accordingly. Hell, even the caterpillar might still do okay in atmosphere. But without VTOL and without control services, it damn well better struggle and put up a fight. Piloting a caterpillar in a Earth-like gravities and atmosphere should take consideration for how you orient your ship, how you roll around and turn around to make sure you still have enough capability to hover without sinking to the ground. In summary. I think Star Citizen sees a real opportunity here to add additional complexity to the flight experience. To know that they're working on it already with Squadron 42 is so hopeful and I'm really curious how this will balance gameplay and bring immersive opportunities for pilots that love exploring the verse through space and atmosphere. I personally cannot wait for this. It's the thing I look forward to most right now, and I'm also really curious what it will do for the racing scene and change that up again. I hope they add lots of intricacy and make it demand some pilot skill. I hope Coupled Mode will continue to provide new pilots with tools to automate things, while I also hope that pilots looking for a more manual approach get it through the means of decoupled flight and lots of toggleable MFD options. Yeah, yeah. Under the trees. Well. I think the trees. Inside the trees. Yeah. If I'm about to yeah, hit a mountain, you guys better tell me, because I. <laughs> yeah, you're about to hit it. Hey, Maze, there's a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking backwards, gentlemen. Come on. <laughs> I can't tell you that. That timing was perfect. <laughs>